this channel hit 5 million views a few weeks ago, which means it's time for another lightning round video. I asked for questions, you guys gave them, and here they are. From Patreon, Tiago Arzura asked, I've been a big fan of Elon Musk for a while, but I've been reading and talking to a friend who worked at Tesla just about the company's culture and started wondering, does the personality character of a leader really matter or should we stick strictly to what they achieve? That is a great question. I've actually been, you know, reading the same things you have about Elon Musk and some of the things that apparently were going on at the Tesla factory. It's all pretty discouraging, not something that you want to hear. Um, similar things were said about Steve Jobs, though. I think there's just something about people who really set out to change the world, who have that level of ambition, that they seem pretty single-minded and don't really pay attention to the things that the rest of us uh, you know, the social norms that the rest of us adhere to. That doesn't make it okay, um, but I think that, you know, we are all on a, a spectrum. We are, we are all good and bad people. We, you know, good people do bad things. Um, you know, a, a person who excels in one area of life can be awful in another area. I think we, we tend to want to just put people into categories of good or bad or whatever. And it's difficult to accept that, you know, somebody can be a world changer and an excellent person in one direction and then just kind of awful and thoughtless in another direction. That's not to excuse it, but it's just reality. From Patreon, Greg Forsyth asked, here are a couple, Planet X? People seem to really think that there's another planet in our solar system. Fusion reactor, is it possible? Using DNA to store data? Or even lightning itself, did they ever find ball lightning to be real? Either way, keep the videos coming, can't wait for more. Normally I wouldn't answer so many questions, but since you're on Patreon, you can do whatever you want. So Planet X, yes, I actually covered that in a video, maybe I can link it here, uh, a while back. I think that there's a good possibility, there's some math out there that seems to speak to a Planet X, but I don't think that there's any kind of Nibiru situation that's going to come around and destroy our planet or anything. Fusion reactors are coming along a lot slower than we would want them to, but there is progress being made. The Wendelstein uh, X7 just a couple of years ago broke some new records. They have these new reactors that are being created by you know, supercomputers and artificial intelligence. So I think we'll crack it eventually. The DNA thing, yeah, apparently you can put, uh, what is it, 215 petabytes, I have to read it up, 215 petabytes of info per gram of DNA. That's pretty astonishing. Now, how well you can extract that data and use that data in a computing process, I don't know. I don't know. Ball lightning, I remember when I was a kid, I was terrified of ball lightning because I saw these, you know, old woodcuts of people, you know, freaking out because this ball of lightning came in through their window and smashed through their house. Apparently one was actually caught on video, it was kind of a big deal back in 2014. I'll link to an article down below. But I think it's it's actually just like plasma. It's a type of plasma that kind of breaks away. That's the theory anyway. From Patreon, Rob Piotto asked, what do you make of the striking similarities and recollections of people's near-death experiences? Super polarizing topic. Obviously there are the, you know, spiritual explanations for such a phenomena, but there's also just the idea that your brain releases just dumps massive amounts of DMT into your brain. People who use DMT have had similar experiences. They tend to be uh, on a, a similar kind of thing. So that's the more, I guess, scientific theory of why we have these sort of near-death experiences is that your, your brain is dumping DMT into the system. And I don't, the thing I never understood about that is what is the evolutionary uh, point of that? Like why would our brains dump DMT uh, at the time of death, I mean, you could make the argument that it's to ease our transition or something like that, but at the same time, I'm like, but what purpose does that serve? I mean, what, what does it matter whether you are eased into death or not, you know, on, a, on an evolutionary scale? I've, I've never quite understood that. On Instagram, Umashetti3 asked, what advice would you give to a determined college student about to enter the real world? What advice should they ignore? So like many things, I have different viewpoints and perspectives that seem to tend to conflict with each other. On one hand, I love the Charles Bukowski quote, find something you love and let it kill you, meaning go after your passion with everything you have. But on the other hand, I also think there's a more practical approach. I think Mike Rowe talked about this, which is don't, don't follow your passion, but bring your passion with you wherever it is you may work. In other words, where, whatever job you might find, you know, pull something from the things that make you passionate, find something in there that you can apply to that job and you'll excel in it. But my best advice would be, uh, no matter what it is that you want to be going into, no matter what jobs you may be finding, have some kind of second or tertiary income stream. Have some other kind of revenue coming in because the, the kind of leverage that you get with your job, with your job search, when you already have something supporting you, 
is it's off the charts. Like you, you just have so many more options when you can set something like that up. So look into entrepreneurship, look into online passive income streams and stuff like that. And it may take you a long time to figure out exactly what that might be. It's a lot easier said than done, I know, but I can vouch for it. It's, it's an amazing place to get to. And that's my best advice I can give. On Instagram, Rizzy Carlos asked, how do sonic attacks work? Great job on the channel, by the way. Why, thank you. Sonic attacks. I don't, I'm not sure exactly what that is. Um, I'm, I'm guessing it's some kind of like ultrasonic uh, ray that can do something. I don't know. It makes me think of the the brown note. Uh, apparently, there there is a a sonic weapon that um, was developed at some point that would it would make you shit your pants. Basically, it's, it, it was a it was a specific frequency of sound that made your bowels release. That's my favorite weapon of all time. E.H. McDaniel asked, who wins game six? The Astros. I cheated, I recorded this way later. The real Chris Cruz asked, do you have any pseudoscientific questions or theories that you secretly consider when dealing with unanswerable questions, dark energy, pyramids, Bill Murray, etc.?" That's a trick question, because we all know that Bill Murray is God. I'm a God, I'm not the God. Semantics. On Instagram, Billy Infante asked, which part of mankind's history would you change if you could? I know this is kind of a trite answer. Everybody always says that they would go back and prevent the burning of the Library of Alexandria, but I, that's just sort of an example. I do feel like the ancient world had a level of technology and understanding of things that got lost somewhere along the way. You know, when you look at things like the Antikythera mechanism, they, they had this very clear understanding of mechanics and astronomy and time that that uh, we didn't give them credit for, that we didn't pick up on until thousands of years later. And I can't help but wonder where we would be now if that information and that knowledge hadn't been lost somewhere along the way. And whether, it, the, the, the Library of Alexandria is just one, uh, one example of times when vast amounts of information were lost. I wish I could have gone back and stopped that. It would be really interesting to see where we'd be now if it wasn't for that. Alt.Oneness asked, do you believe it's scientifically plausible that reincarnation or the belief of a soul exists? Also, I'd like to hear your opinion on this as well. I think I covered this about as well as I could in my God video way back when, um, but I think if we do have any kind of uh, consciousness that exists outside of our meat helmet, it would be just that we are a tiny, tiny experiential piece of a vast super consciousness. Jonas Lavarini asked, what is your opinion on psychedelic substances? Very pro, especially in a therapeutic uh, clinical setting. And for things like PTSD, it shows a lot of promise there. Uh, I think a lot more research needs to be going into that. Demon Rising on Instagram asked, what is consciousness? So there's a depressing answer to this and there's an inspiring uh, answer to this. The depressing answer is that it's literally an illusion created by multiple semi-conscious modules in our brain that we experience. And the inspiring idea is that it's an emergent phenomena that naturally occurs through simplistic systems creating complex systems both inside of our head and without that we are a part of in a broader sense. And in fact, is an intrinsic part of the fabric of the universe. Christian Heth on Instagram asks, considering progress in the emergence of transhumans, how would a society of immortals or extremely old people look like? Florida. On Instagram, TV Steel City 11 asked, what's your opinion on the seven wonders of the world? They're wonderful. <laughs> are there modern wonders of the world? I don't know. On Instagram, Johnny0917 asked, what are some of the biggest discoveries that come out of the LHC? The Higgs boson, obviously, uh, tetra quarks, uh, quark gluon plasma, and lepton universality, duh. I had to look it up, there are links downstairs. On Instagram, Enrico Demio Music asks, what do you think will happen in music and the arts when the inevitable singularity happens? So we're already starting to see uh, artificial intelligence becoming a part of the design process, especially for, for buildings and, and uh, products and stuff like that. My friend Greg talked with me about that when we did the uh, podcast together about how designers are using AI to kind of come up with, you know, multiple, maybe hundreds of different original prototypes that they can then add on to. I can see that definitely happening with music and, and the other kinds of arts. Um, there's already music bots that are creating music that are kind of indistinguishable from, uh, you know, what we are able to do. Maybe a singularity event would create all possible music and artistic creations ever possible at once, maybe? Yeah, I want to believe that creativity and art is a singular domain of the human mind, that computers could never replicate that, but I don't think that's actually true. 
On Instagram, Gostagram asked, is a growing interest in Mars a signal showing that Earth's time is coming to a close? Nah, we've always had an interest in Mars. On Instagram, Stan Walk asked, how are the mind affecting or improving surgeries any different from performance enhancing drugs, and how do you think these will be regulated when they become more mainstream? It's hard to say. I'm sure I'm positive that at some point people will use these new super brain capabilities for a nefarious purpose, and it's hard to say how things might get regulated and changed after that. But this might just be one of those things that once that cat is out of the bag, there's not a whole lot you can do to put it back in there. Is cat out of the bag the right term? On Instagram, Nakarasu Gariabi Yakim, I'm not even gonna try it. How long do you think it would take for the singularity to start becoming a real problem that affects people? I'm really starting to think that the singularity is not so much gonna be like a big explosive event, but a process that we're already involved in we're already deep into the singularity as we as, as you know and you look at the long term from the industrial revolution uh you know we're, we're kind of already in it and it's already starting to affect people but the the nature of nature is that a species has to adapt to survive and we have to change and that's what we have to do now it's that's where we are sultan with swords asked on instagram do you think we'll ever be able to see a warp drive being made in our lifetime Probably not. I think there's a lot of breakthroughs in energy production that we would have to achieve before anything like a warp drive is possible. Uh, but then, again, with life extension technologies, we might be living long enough to see all kinds of things that we don't think we'd be able to see now so that lifespan is longer. I don't know, uh, but I doubt it. Marcus Kimius III asked on Instagram, what do you think is the most efficient way to leave orbit, current or near future tech? I'm totally not an expert on this, I'm not sure, but there have been some really interesting and promising developments in ion drives recently that have been coming out, so it'll be interesting to see um, what comes of that. On Instagram, Sam Snodgrass asked, what the heck is quantum dot photovoltaics? Yeah, I had to look this up. I'd never heard of this before, but um, the very basic thing that I got out of it, there's a lot of details, is that um, it's basically a photovoltaic cell that can collect energy from a larger wavelength of light spectra, especially in the infrared spectrum, which is interesting. On Instagram, quantumthink.ing asked, what is string theory? The simplest answer is it's the idea that at the tiniest level, uh, our reality is made up of tiny vibrating strings that depending on how they vibrate, different types of matter are created. And uh, it's, a, it's an attempt to reconcile relativistic physics and quantum physics. There's a whole lot more to it than that, but uh, lightning round video. On Facebook, Michael Hepnell asked, Joe, is it true that animal food production is responsible for the vast majority of the world's greenhouse gases? And is it the only way of reducing them is to cut out meat from our diets? Hello from the UK. Hello from the US. I don't know if it's the vast majority, but it is a major contributor. And I think that is one of the best uh, reasons for going to a vegetarian or vegan diet. Although I, I don't do it myself. I, I have been trying to reduce my uh, meat intake a little bit. It's very resource intensive and it does pump a lot of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Yeah. Paul Kirby on Facebook asked, with all these global warming effects taking effect and the fact that we've passed a few thresholds already and the fact that politicians are greedy bastards, how screwed are we? Really? Uh, we're not as screwed as our kids generation is. Yeah, I, I do think it's time that we um, in addition to talking about reducing greenhouse emissions, we need to start talking about how we can uh, prepare for the inevitable changes that are gonna be occurring, especially in coastal cities and whatnot. And, and even looking into ways to, to scrub the atmosphere of carbon dioxide and maybe regulate and keep some kind of stasis in the, uh, in the atmosphere. It's, it's, it's at that point, we, we have to start looking at those solutions. Anush Tanksali on Facebook asked, if you were given immortality and time travel to 5000 BC Egypt or any other place of your choice, what would you do? I'd probably die because they don't have antibiotics. Ali Cook on Facebook asked, Joe, what would happen if a gravitational wave passed through a black hole? I, I don't know. Hey Cletus, you know? Yeah. If, if a gravitational wave went through a black hole? I don't know. Y yeah, we got nothing. Shane Sheehan on Facebook asks, Joe, do you have a personal favorite solution out of the myriad possible solutions of the Fermi Paradox? I don't know if it's my favorite, because it's not very fun, but I, I think the, the most likely solution for the Fermi Paradox is just that space is really big, and that by the time signals from many civilizations out there could get to us, um, they would be so distorted and faded into the background, radiation and cosmic rays, that we wouldn't be able to interpret anything out of it. I've also been flirting with the idea of of the possibility of a civilization that was living near, say, a black hole or something like that and was experiencing time differently than us. And if we were interpreting their, their signals that were coming out of there, something that to them might have been, you know, a 10 minute broadcast, if you will, would maybe take 
10,000 years for us. So it would just be like this droning thing and to us it would just seem like you know, the background radiation or something, we wouldn't be able to make heads or tails of it. It's an interesting thought that I've had. Brian Doe on Facebook asked, if you had the chance to experience a real life Jurassic Park, if you ended up finding yourself in a situation where the raptors were chasing you, one of them stops and looks you in the eye and then lunges after you. You stop, drop, then hit the floor. Everybody walked the dinosaur. That was clever and entertaining. On Facebook, Andreas Butenbender asked, what do you think of Gödel's incompleteness theorem as an argument against the computability of the consciousness within a machine? Yeah, I, I, uh, I think that's a thing. On Facebook, Jason Joslin asked, can you explain exactly what a wave partial duality is? It's a term I've heard thrown around and I don't know exactly what it is. I'm gonna assume you meant wave particle duality and if you did, I covered that in the, in the double slit experiment video. On Facebook, Jimmy McInerney asked, when do you think we'll become a type one civilization? I give it 200 years. On Facebook, Stefan Steinberg asked, how was your day? Good. On Twitter, Nikolai Porshnikov asked, why is the earth flat? Yeah, mama. On Twitter, Maddie Kins asked, what are some of your thoughts on the simulated reality theory? Do you think we could go about trying to prove or disprove it? I've already talked about that in uh, one of my more popular videos, actually. You can go there to get most of the skinny on it. I know there are some theoretical experiments that uh, are being proposed to try to figure out this. Um, I, I don't have any specifics on that, but I know there are some that people are working on. I think it's an interesting concept, but you know, I do think that it's just another in a long line of ideas about how the nature of reality is not what we think it is, which is religion adjacent, let's just say. On Twitter, Chris Millsap asked, have you read Life 3.0 by Max Tegmark? It would seem to be right up your alley. If so, what were your thoughts? I haven't. I should. I will. On Snapchat, Zoe Jeremy asked, I was thinking today, what in the hell are we? Are we meat bags with souls or are we something much greater? I like to think that we're part of a greater system in some way, whether that system has any meaning behind it whatsoever, who knows. On Snapchat, Mark L asked, what are your thoughts on the theory that the universe could have been formed spontaneously from quite literally nothing via quantum fluctuations? Love the vids, cheers. Thank you. Uh, I still need to read the book from Lawrence Krauss, A Universe from Nothing. Um, I have not gotten around to reading that. I'm sure that every answer you want would be right there. But that does at the moment seem to be the predominant explanation for what started the Big Bang. Uh, that and the possibility of brains colliding from different dimensions. On Snapchat, Cameron McGilvery asked, what's your idea of the perfect future society? I don't think there's such a thing as a perfect society. You know, I just did a video on the Venus Project and they've got some really interesting ideas via automation and AI and having our technology basically see to our basic needs so that we don't have to, you know, always be striving and, and dealing with scarcity. Now I covered that in depth in this last week's video, but I do think that putting AI and automation to work for us instead of taking work away from us uh, is gonna be the big challenge over the next hundred years. On Snapchat, Matt Allard FTW asked, what's the significance of the Breakthrough Starshot program? Can't say yet, we've gotta wait and see what happens when they actually give it a shot, but it'll be interesting. On Snapchat, Transalzum asked, are you God? And does the quantum theory tell us that things only exist when observed? It's not that they don't exist until they observed, it's just that they don't have a specific position and velocity until they're observed and that waveform collapses. They still exist, but they exist in a, in a superposition state. And Bill Murray is God, we've established this. Well, that was fun. Thank you guys for watching and thanks for all the questions that came through. And thanks for getting me to 5 million views, man. I guess I'll do another one of these at 10. And we'll, I mean, I'm already at like five and a half, so it might not be that far away. In the meantime, you guys have an eye-opening week and I will see you next Monday. Love you guys, take care.